really know how this video is gonna go I want to try and make it raw and real and um, I don't have to make this video I just want to make this video you know I've chosen to post my life on the internet so many or almost all of you probably know that my sister passed away and I've revealed like little details about it but what I really want to do is like talk about her and the situation not because it's anyone's business, but after this incident has happened, I have had hundreds and thousands of people um, message me like relating and saying, you know, they're in the same position. And personally, I never had like any of my friends, I can't talk, have like similar situations like growing up with a sibling um, battling addiction. And so I feel like no one really understands. Um, I even myself would never understand unless you're actually in the shoes of the addict. But as a sibling who watched her sister, um, you know, battle nine and a half years, um, I heard this quote from like a grief thing um, and it says, When a child dies, you lose the future. When a parent dies, you lose the past. Um, but when a sibling dies young, you lose the past and the future which is really hard and there's not a lot of resources out there for sibling loss um you know posting being vulnerable i really hate that word but um it reminds me of the bachelor but posting about this kind of stuff on the internet isn't because honestly i feel like no one probably cares but i have had literal messages from people being like hey um i just wanted to let you know your videos got me clean i'm so sorry to hear about your sister but after i heard about it i reconnected i reached out to my sister and i'm who I haven't spoke to in so so long and rebuilt our friendship and that just like freaking like crushes me but it, it like really like ugh, hits my heart I don't know the proper words to use I can't I can't think straight but um I I say like I always say if I were to come across a video like mine or a TikTok like the ones that I've been posting about about her loss um even right before it happened um I feel like it would have made such a difference I feel like I would have just reached out to her more. I mean, we did talk. We didn't talk every day. This year was probably the, like, most... It was 100% the most off year we've ever been in our whole entire lives. Like, we've never gone this... It, we got in our biggest fight we've ever been in this year, but we rekindled things. Um, it's the longest I've ever gone without seeing her because, you know, of COVID. And she was... She actually went out of state this year um, to get some help. And uh, that's where she passed away. Yeah, I just wish, you know... I would have seen something like this and sent it to her and been like, dude, like, I just wish I would have checked up on her more, you know? Like, our last conversation was just so nonchalant, casual. Um, I had moved to a new city five days before she died. And I moved here and she told me how happy she was for me, you know, getting a fresh start. And then I'm like, thanks, sis. And she's like, I'm really proud of you. Um, and then she's like, uh, are you in Nashville? And I just replied, Midtown. One word, Midtown. Next day she died. Like what? 
That's so crazy. Actually, I sent her a text at six in the morning that morning because I was sitting in the bathtub and I had no idea and she didn't reply. But I had a question about something, you know, just like, cause you text your sister when you have questions about things. I know for a fact, if I did not have my sister, if I did not grow up uh, watching my sister and know about it, I would be so ignorant to addiction. Like what they put on TV is so like cliche and I just feel like it, there's so much depth to it. Not that anyone's judging, but I definitely know that some people that just might not know, they just might be, be like, oh my goodness, like what is so bad in that person's life that had them started on drugs? Like why would they do drugs? And we just tend to judge one another so quickly. Um, but all my friends who like actually knew my sister, like if you knew my sister, she was, and I know everyone says this when someone <laughs> dies, but um, she was not like the others. People, and as far gone as she was, you know, are usually like missing teeth, skinny as bones. Um, no, she was beautiful and had beautiful long hair and literally perfect white, huge teeth. Um, her teeth were like the number one thing that everyone noticed about her. When she was really young, she won like best looking. She was always like the prettiest girl in the room, always. I was always like Kat Howard's little sister. Like no one knew who I was. I was always very shy. Uh, she would bring out that side of me. Um, she taught me really how to just not really give a crap about anything. <laughs> she used to be so carefree. It's like actually hilarious how carefree. I always would say the worst decision someone could make in their life would be not to mess with Kat, but to mess with me. Because even if I didn't tell her about it, if some girl was jealous or someone said something or started a rumor and if she found out about it, she would come for you. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed and I'd be like, Kat, these people don't even know me, it's okay, they're just blah blah blah. And she, oh my gosh, she would literally come to your house and find you, so funny. Okay, when she was 14 years old, she dated um, an older boy, I think he was like 18 uh, or 17. I don't know, I really don't know, don't come for me. Just think about 14 years old, okay? Like, I don't even remember being 14, I do, and I try and not remember it because it was such an embarrassment. Like, I was such a weirdo, I just didn't know anything about the world. Like, I thought I was so grown up and there was so much life left. Like, <laughs> I was a complete different person. Literally completely different. We don't even wanna talk about it. I'm uh, pretty sure I spelled my name different too, maybe, no. But, um, yeah, so she just, all that happened was when she was just young and beautiful, she dated an older boy who would get her mixed up into bad things. And then one thing led into another and it was always, she was so embarrassed by it. She never liked doing these things, but she would wake me up in the middle of the night and you know, I'd be going to school. She always went to like alternative schools or was in and out of rehabs and always getting help. She was always in somewhere getting help whether she liked it or not. Um, but she would like, I would wake up to her having nightmares when I was, you know, like 15 and 16 and she was down the hall screaming and I'd have to wake her up to stop and she would just be like, Christy, my body hurts. Like I'm in pain, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Cause like she was having terrible withdrawals and she was, she's cried to me so many times about how like, she never wanted to do it. She, I don't want to do it, Christy, I know. She was very aware that if you do this, these drugs, like if you do these things, you're gonna die. No one makes it out alive. You either get sober or you get clean or you die. There's no in between. She's lost, she, everyone she knows that's on it, they, they die or they get clean. There's literally no balancing. I'm sorry, my mind is so sc like scrambled. I don't want people thinking that she was ever like intentionally upset and like took these or did stuff because um, it was not the case at all. Um, however, it is a disease and it gives you a whole different mindset. Um, you know, I watched her slowly not become herself because as kids she was feisty and did not give care and I watched her turn into like one of the most self-conscious people I knew. Never felt good about herself, never felt like she was good enough. She wanted to live, she wanted to live. All her journal notes, every time I talked to her, it was always like, Christy, I just wanna get clean, I have to, I wanna do it for you, I wanna be normal, I wanna live a normal life. She didn't do the whole like prom and all that stuff because all because of one decision when she's 14 and her body was always hurting so, um, she was just always having to get help and she couldn't stop and was embarrassed and would hide it from us. It's not like she would go do it to be cool. She would literally hide it from me and I walked in on her like a couple times, you know, tying her arm up and she would just break down in tears 
and begged me not not to tell anyone and not to be mad at her and of course I would say sometimes I would just be mad and be like it's your life I mean if you want to die like whatever I would just watch her feel so crappy about herself like that you know that's not the case like um I don't want this but I'm in pain Christy she told me I remember she told me that every day she wakes up fighting for her life um, even when she's been clean for a while, every day waking up, it's always on her mind. It's all she thinks about. And so the only positive thing I can ever think of getting out of this is that she's finally like out of pain. And she was uh, 24, about to be 25, and she'd been dealing with that since she was 14. Like that feeling. Never, She never just got to wake up and be like, I'm going to have a good day. She explained it to me about her mind was always like, I'm going to stay sober. That's she had to think of that 24 7 and that's not something like these are your prime years like these are just supposed to be the best years of your life um and unfortunately hers were um not okay anyways this is like very hard for me to do because i'm very i'm not a good speaker i'm not a good talker i'm a good journaler not really i'm a good typer i i I have so many thoughts in my head, um, I'm just bad at explaining them and making them make sense and sometimes I'm afraid that they're gonna come out the wrong way so like even when I watch this back and edit it there's gonna be so many things I'm gonna watch and maybe like that's not what I meant by that or like I wanted to say my brain has not made sense the past couple months but that on top of that that's how I am um, I'm kind of all over the place um, I can't even begin to explain how this feels how I've been feeling. Um, it's literally such a roller coaster, and I've grieved um, a lot before. You know, this is not my first loss. This is just my hardest. Um, and every single loss I've had has been completely different. Every single one, I think that there's no getting up. And same with this one, and I always do get up. But this one, even though I do get up, this one is going to. Um, it's gonna be permanent and yes I will get better but I really don't think I'll ever be like fully okay um what you see me doing on the internet and like me moving forward um it's because I have to because if I'm if I don't keep making videos and like trying to live my life um I'm literally going to go into a black hole and <laughs> I'm very capable of being a hermit and falling off the face of the planet. I saw this quote I just posted the other day. Just because someone carries it well doesn't mean it isn't heavy. I talk about it all the time. It's all I can talk about and I'm not sorry for that. It's because it's the only thing that's on my mind. Literally the second I wake up in the morning, I think about my sister. All throughout the day when I'm cooking, when I'm driving, when I'm... The worst is when I'm in the nail salon every time I have a panic attack in there and I can't do normal things because I'm just constantly thinking about her and... I'm not scared, um, I know she's better, but I haven't slept with the lights off by myself since she passed. I'm not afraid of her, I don't know why, I really can't tell you why I have, but if I'm alone I have to keep every single light on and I go to sleep with the TV on and the main light, all my lamps, my windows up, probably not safe to say, but... Um, closet bathroom everything I don't I can't explain why I'm doing any of the things I'm doing but um, I just am every single day is different um, it's been you know a couple months four months maybe uh, since my sister passed but um, I haven't been able to do this video I feel like every if I would have filmed it in a different each month I would have filmed it would have been a different total different video because every month I'm different. Some up, you know, it's literally, I don't know. Since it's happened, all I've done is research the afterlife and watch a ton of addiction things. And I mean, my sister would always try and make me watch them with her because she loved the addiction shows. She would just be like, this is so sad. Like, I'm just so sad for them, these people. Christy, like, I really hope this never happens to me. She was very aware and like, that's what just crushes me. It wasn't like, this was nothing new to her. She'd been literally struggling for so long. And like someone, when you meet her, like people, you would have no idea. Especially when you hear something as like hardcore, someone like me who doesn't, okay. Someone like me who like doesn't have any friends that do hardcore drugs, like if you hear someone that does heroin, you're probably like, oh my God. Like she's literally the same age as me. We're 14 months apart. She could have lived like the same lifestyle as me and like gone to public high school and gone to college and whatever she would have wanted but she was literally just fighting so hard and she was um very hard working and 
very organized and very clean and put together very very nurturing very motherly um i'm crying because it makes me sad that she like never gonna be a mother or whatever but when i think about it when i'm talking about that um god i can't speak it's almost like she was one to me sometimes <laughs> Because I'm such a baby, like I'm literally such a child and she always would tell me like, you're never going to grow up. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I still drink juice boxes. She would take care of me. My favorite thing to do, this is going to sound bad, but my favorite thing to do when I was hungover was hang out with my sister because she was just so desperate and happy to like hang out with me because she always just thought she was like this huge disappointment. And um, in my head, I'm like, I have to be mean to her sometimes because it's like the only way she's going to like... She's gonna see that like I'm not gonna talk to her until she's clean, you know? And now I feel bad because, you know, she was always, she was trying. Um, she never stopped trying. It wasn't like she was like choosing. I mean, she was choosing to use, but it was because she was in so much pain. Like literally, she was going to all the meetings and her body just like hurt so bad and she just had no control over it. Um, but one of my favorite things, sorry, I'm so, I can't think straight, is uh, anytime I was like, would go out one night and just be not feeling too hot the next day. My favorite thing to do was go hang out with my sister because she would literally just be so happy to like hang out with me. Literally like give me a pedicure, feed me, clean, put my feet up and wipe my feet, wipe the table, give me blankets, give me pillow, watch, put on whatever I wanted. If I said, can you bring me some, like something, she'd bring it to me. It, I literally didn't have to move a finger. Sounds terrible, but like she, she that's just I'm just the baby sister like that's just how our relationship was She loved like being motherly so I let her do it. Okay, <laughs> and she loved cleaning So I think it's better off that I read something that I wrote because I'm just going all over the place not getting to the point of anything but I'm going to read something that I wrote in my notes um, on her birthday her birthday was a month after she died um and i wrote it when i was on the plane i didn't speak at her funeral and it really really bothers me I'm just reading from my notes as time goes on it weirdly has gotten harder this is also new and fresh as she just died a month before her birthday but i think we've all just been in such denial that now it's really sinking in which is true um when it happened i mean i literally cried so much my eyes were puffed to hear my head was pounding i couldn't I literally screamed, no, no, no. Beat the steering wheel. I pulled over in a parking lot and <laughs> hyperventilated. Like, I will never forget, I will never forget that moment. I can't even drive past where I was when um, I got the phone call. Oh, my dad called me and he works every day. He doesn't ever call me in the middle of the day. I got, I was doing my first like little nanny job not really i just was helping a friend out that day and i got off at like 11 30 and right when i left i was driving and my dad calls me christy and i'm at a stoplight and i'm like yeah and then he goes hey oh, where are you and i just like knew and then my mom was on the phone and my parents have never like three-way called i don't know if she was with him i still i never asked um but she goes hey christy and they were together and like they both work and so i was just like crap what's wrong anyways too many details that don't matter okay i'm used to her being gone but i'm also used to her always coming back so like i hadn't seen her like i said i hadn't seen her in a very long time this year um but i guess I've gone long periods of time, like a couple months without seeing her because she always would be, you know, in treatment centers and stuff. But I, you know, she, it was right for her birthday. So I thought like, oh, I'll see her for her birthday or for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or my birthday or, you know, I'll see her again. So I'm used to her being gone. It, it, it wasn't like I was just with her. Um, I didn't speak at the funeral and it's eating at me every day because we weirdly talked about these things all the time and I always told her I would we did she we that's why we knew what we played leonard skinner Freebird at her funeral because i have a text message of her making she made a group chat with my brother and i and said if i die play this at my funeral and it was like a year ago and we both were like okay and then she's like i mean i hope i don't die but if i do you know just something like i would say like i always would say if i die everyone 
y'all better w put my hot pink lipstick on me, you know, like stuff like that. And so whether she was kidding or not, we played it. Um, I always told her because, you know, she always just thought like no one would speak. I always told her I would speak and I, I just couldn't. I know I could have though because I, I was in such shock that I like felt like I would have been able to speak. Like uh, that whole week I had this presence, like my faith was so strong and I like felt her and I felt like I wasn't really sad and what happened what the truth is is I was literally in shock which I've never been in shock like that in my entire life like I thought I had been in shock but no it's like I can't I, I can't explain it um so anyways I feel like no one really represented her as an individual as well as they could have my brother spoke at the funeral and did a great job he left all his notes and I don't know how he did it I literally would have been like I don't know he did really good um she was just such a great person there's so much like I guess I just wanted to I, I wanted to say um so she was talked about as a great person and a young woman and an addict and everything was said beautifully but me being her sister I can't help but overlook those little things and want her to really be remembered for who she really truly was as well as many other little details such as I wish we straightened her hair and I wish her neckline on her outfit was different and I wish we put longer nails on her and I wish we tanned more of her skin. Like, you know, like there's just stuff that I think about that doesn't matter but it's just such a fast thing and it's like y'all, I had to go with my mom. I had to go with my mom. I'm sorry and I had to go see her my mom wanted to see her before the morgue like did her up you know fixed her up so basically she just looked like what she'd look like for a couple days and um my mom just wanted to see her you know my mom I don't know the reasoning she just wanted to see her daughter and like know that that's actually her I guess so I went with her And I thought I was going to lose it, but I walked in and, yo, I'm telling you, like, I, like, I guess I was in shock still, but I felt her whole presence with me. She was laying there on the table. My sister's laying, laying there on the table. I could see, like, her tongue. I could see, like, not like that, but her mouth wasn't, like, fully shut. I could see her tongue. You know, she hadn't been fixed up in days. Um, her face was a different color. And um, I just stood by my mom and I kept it together and I don't know how because y'all see how emotional I am like it's I can't explain it but like the week it happened or like in the beginning it was a lot easier because you're in such shock and denial um, but I had to go with my mom to pick out a coffin and help what color and I'm like I don't really care you know but then there's like, there's so much to it. There's like the outfit, like what do you bury them in? Like what do you, my mom picked out this really nice black suit. I mean like black dress pants and like black top. And I just burst it down crying because I'm like, mom, it's just like not cat. Um, I don't really know. Like I've buried grandparents and I've buried friends who have been males and young males and you put them in suits and tuxes. But like, what do you bury a 24 year old girl in? You know, a beautiful girl. There's no, when you Google it, there's literally nothing. So I found this beautiful dress from Anthropology, or no, it wasn't from Anthropology. I found this beautiful dress, overnighted it, and it didn't come. So my friends went and picked out like this white jumpsuit where she looked like an angel, and um, but it worked out. And so there's just like so many regrets I have, and there's just. It's a lot more to it than I feel like people really think. It wasn't just like me showing. Like there's a lot. There's a lot the family does, and I guess when I've I, I've had like five grandparents pass, and on my end I've never had to do any of that stuff. Um, and not this young. I'm, I know I'll have to bury my parents, but I'm hoping it won't be anytime soon, and I won't have to make these decisions. My sister was young and important to me, and I know that. If it were me, I would want the same done to me. So I made sure they put lashes on her, girl. Like, we gave them the nail polish. We gave them lip gloss. We got her jewelry to wear. Like, new jewelry to bury her in. Um, Because I guess we wanted to keep what she had or else it was all pawned. But, um, anyways. 
Kat was the funniest person I've ever met in my life. I've always been a goofball and been all weird on social media and wild, etc. But Kat didn't even have to try. She would do or say anything and have the straightest face and everyone would be busting out laughing without her even meaning to be funny. She was just such a light and such a comedian from the beginning. Like she was literally like that since we were little. <laughs> You know, I lost my sister. I lost the one person who I could go. I lost. I lost the one person who I could go to for anything or call with any situation. We would always be in huge fights. You know, we our relationship was so weird. It was like we would act like we literally hated each other. But then I would just call her if I had something I needed or like needed her help with. I'd call her, and we'd never bring up a fight. It's just like that's how siblings, that's how your s sister is, you know, like we get in the biggest fight ever and then I just call her and be like, hey, what's the Netflix password? Or like, hey, <laughs> you know, I can't go get my nails done at my normal nail place because I don't want to go in there and I don't want every time I go, it's how are you? Oh my gosh, how's your sister? Like, what am I going to say? Am I just going to be like, good? Probably that's what I should say, but am I going to say, oh, she just died. It's very morbid, I know, but like. There's just like everyday things that I have to do differently now and I'm trying to adjust to different things and like y I feel like it's probably not thought about all the time but just like little things people are saying and like every time I watch a freaking TV show and someone's like dying or someone's getting married I just I can't watch it because I can't stop thinking about how like my maid of honor isn't gonna be my maid of honor anymore she won't even be there or how she'll never get to get married or She'll never get to have kids and she won't ever get to meet my kids. I literally have all old text messages where a year ago, hold on, a year ago, a year before she passed, a very close friend of mine passed away and it tore me apart because he passed away the same, he, he overdosed on heroin and it just hit so close to home for me and I was just so torn apart even though I hadn't seen him in like two years. I was just so emotional over his death. Um... And then my grandmother passed two or three weeks after that. And then Kat passed 10 months after that. It was just like nonstop. But um, she couldn't go to his funeral with me and I really wanted her to because it was heroin and I like wanted her to see and she knew him. And anyway, she couldn't go because she had just gotten in some trouble right before he passed, um, legal trouble. And she never, weirdly never gotten in legal trouble before. She always got away with everything or like, got around situations but she got in some legal pr trouble and had to by law go to i guess some rehab detox centers and rehab centers and i went and visited her through all of them and it got us like we got a lot closer and i went and visited her i drove like two hours away to one right when my friend passed and i just cried to her and i was like i'm so sorry that you're struggling but cat i'm ripped to pieces about this boy it's a really close friend of mine who just passed away, he overdosed, and I just feel so bad for not knowing, not knowing he was using, not staying in touch. I just had spoken to him like a week before and literally had no idea, and I just am so sad because like, cat, I'm this beat up about a friend. If this was you, I don't think I could live. I do not think I would get through it. Like, do you hear me? <laughs> And I'm not mushy gushy at all. I don't ever talk about feelings. I hate being touched. I hate, it's like they, she always jokes around about, oh baby Christy and tries to hug me because I hate, I'm like, stop. Gross, you know, like I hate it. But it was the first time I like really like admitted my feelings to her and cried to her. And I was like, you can't, you cannot die on me because I will not survive it, okay? I literally will not get through it. And she was like, oh my God, like, it like tore her to hear me say that because she just like kind of she always would say like I feel like you hate me I feel like you don't like me and I'm like that's not the truth cat I just don't show love <laughs> and I have all these old text messages me telling her she has to meet you have to meet my kids because they're gonna be awesome and I, this was like me telling her like you gotta get better girl because my kids are gonna be legends she's like okay Christy okay so I always said the worst decision anyone who knows me or comes across me could ever make in their life would be to hurt my feelings. I don't care if someone gives me a mean look, someone talks about me online, a boy does me wrong, you're making the worst decision ever. And not because of me, it's because Kat Howard is my big sister. No matter how small the situation, she was going to get involved and make sure you apologized. <laughs> a sister is someone unlike any friend or soulmate you meet. You're bound for life. You don't choose each other, so regardless how similar or different you are, they're always going to be in your life. 
so you learn to love every flaw and every strength. You pick up the same social cues and mannerisms even when you don't hang out, even when you don't hang out often. It's just a part of growing up together and being so close and being each other's other half. So like when I lost a piece of cat, I feel like I lost a piece of myself. Oh lord. It's a Saturday night. There's really parties going on outside. But uh, I'm making this video. Okay. We could go days or weeks without talking or e we even got in the biggest fight which we or even get in the biggest fight, which we did in May. And then by the end of the June, it just takes a phone call. Hi, sissy. A boy hurt my feelings, you know? They're like, what are you doing for the fourth? I'm homesick. And suddenly you forget everything that you were ever upset about. There's no questions asked. None of it mattered. Everything's normal. Um, Kat and I got real deep into it a couple months ago. And we were lucky enough to amend that soonly after, which was no surprise. I mean, she is my sister, so that's how it goes. Kat was super motherly and nurturing. She would have made the best mom, the greatest mom actually. She babied me all the way up until I was 23. People will try and understand addiction, even speaking for myself, and they will never really know unless they're in the person's shoes. I would be so ignorant on the severi severity, is that the word, severity? <laughs> if I didn't grow up around it. Um, there's a difference with people who want to get high and who want to get help. Kat never actually wanted to get high or live this life. She wanted to be like me, not really like me, but like she wanted by me as in not an addict, which is nothing special, but she saw the life I was able to live right in front of her and she fought nonstop for 10 years to fight this disease. Never was she careless and didn't want to be better. She always wanted to be better, always. Going through all her journals, we see nothing but addresses and phone numbers to detox and rehabs so that whenever she gets pissed off, kicked out, or starts hurting and wants to leave, she'll have an address to get straight back into another one. Like, she was very aware. She knew that if she wasn't in one, she would use. And she knew if she used, she'd get kicked out of one and have nowhere to go. So she really, you know, was always trying, which is what breaks me. I admire that about her so much because even when she was using, she would take herself right into a new center to get help. She never would let herself roam free because she knew her weaknesses. That takes a lot of courage and strength to know what you can and can't do and are capable of. The texts, the voicemails, and videos I have of her are ones I will cherish forever. She always tried so, so hard to be strong and would try to toughen me up to be strong for her. I'm really just so, so sad for her. I just miss my sister so much. And I knew this day would come, but I didn't know it would come this soon. You really never expect something like this, even when someone is sick. It's a hard thing to accept and our family is gonna really, really struggle for a while, but I know Kat's with us and is making me step up for everyone and try and fill her big shoes, even though that's not very possible. I know we will be okay. I know we will because life is worth living and I know Kat is so, so sad that she isn't here with us, but she's finally free and out of pain. She's not fighting. She had to fight every single day, every day, for the last 10 years, she woke up with urges and pains. Now it's all gone and she's all free. She has friends with her in heaven and she has a lot of family. She's now my guardian angel. Although, although she didn't make it to 25, that girl was mature as hell. <laughs> she was a damn near 35 year old in a 20 year old's body. She knew her purpose and she tried her best and everything she did and that's really all you can do. My sister was awesome and I'm gonna talk about her for the rest of my life with Bree, who's my niece, my brother's daughter, with my husband, with my kids. I don't care if they, don't, they didn't meet her. They will know every story there is because she deserves to be remembered and she deserves to fly high. If there's something that I wish I could have told her before she passed, um, it would be this. You're beautiful. And you could have whoever you want and whatever you want, but you don't believe that. You need to learn to let go of whatever it is that makes you think you're not good enough. So that's when you're gonna beat this. When you learn that you matter is when you're gonna beat this. That's something I wish I could have told her. And that's pretty much all I have in my notes. And this video is all over the place, but um, then I have my little journal, letters to my sister in heaven that I've been writing. I just talked to her. Apparently like the afterlife, uh, when we're i'm gonna say this wrong but when we dream we're on the same like frequency level as those crossed over so a lot of people have had like dreams of loved ones crossed over and they felt so real and they say that sometimes they'll come and communicate with you in your dreams 
and I haven't had her in any of my dreams which sometimes really makes me sad because I'm like dang like if I knew her she would bust everyone out of the way and do everything she can but I feel like there's a reason I feel like she sees me hurting and doesn't want to scare me or maybe she's not able to I don't know how the spirit world works <laughs> I did go see a psychic medium right after it happened, but I think I went a little too early because I didn't really seem to find much out, which is so weird because like literally knowing her, we like would talk about this stuff all the time, not because she knew she was gonna die soon, but she kind of knew if she wasn't gonna get clean, it was gonna happen. We just thought like she would be a lot more grown if that ever unfortunately did happen. I didn't think it would literally be like she was 24 years old <laughs> my biggest fear in life has always been death and i'm afraid of a lot of stuff but i'm weirdly not as afraid of dying anymore i don't want to die um i just in a way i'm like not sad about it at all because i'm just like so excited to get to see her again y'all like it's crazy i'm gonna read one one letter from here okay and then then i'll get out of your hair so on 6 a.m i because i date and time them i wrote oh it's eight weeks it's been eight weeks since you left Earth. Every day I wake up and you're the first thing on my mind. Honestly, not a second goes by where you're off my mind. It comes in waves. I'm sad, angry, happy, confused, hurt, all of it. I get really sad that I just entered a new chapter of my life and I don't have you here to share it with. I know for a fact you would run away from wherever you were and come hide away slash live with me like you have in every apartment I've lived at. I started listening to a new audiobook today about grief. It's freaking tough, cat. I always knew you'd be gone someday, but I was never ready. I'm so scared for the denial to fully wear off, to be honest. I don't want to feel it all. I prefer to stay numb. I hope to see you in my dreams soon. I heard that's where we communicate. I'm looking for signs always, but I have felt your nosy ass with me 24-7 since you've left. I'll visit you tomorrow. I got you a present. Okay, I'll share one more. So this was in December. I'm standing, in my, I'm standing against my living room wall. My arms are open, my eyes are shut, and I'm holding my arms. And I am holding your arms. I'm wrapping my arms around myself, squeezing you in between me, giving you a hug. And the tears are flowing. Are you with me? <laughs> I don't know why I wrote this, okay? I am scared. Today I went to this little crystal healing store and cried because I kept hearing slash picturing all the things you would say in your voice, loving all the little trinkets and crystals, because we love that stuff. I could just hear her being in there being like, oh, cool. <laughs> Um, I found slash have one of your little trinket boxes with me and I love it. I am so sad. I miss my big sister. I don't want to live a life without you. I don't want to die, but I don't want to be alive. I hurt for me and I hurt for you. Please come back, Kat. Please come back. I know how strong you are. Please, please come back to me. I won't tell anyone. Just show me something that you're okay. I won't know until I hear it from you. Please come back to me. So, like, it gets grief. It makes you, um, you're just, I don't know the word. You're just begging. Um, I don't mean to make her death my identity. It's so fresh and so new. And um, when my sister died, a piece of me died with her. And that's how it's always going to be. But I'm very self-aware. And I know that, like, I'm going to be okay, you know? Like, well, as okay as I can be. Um, and I know that I'm not, I can't curl up in a ball forever, you know? Like, I keep making videos and vlogs and stuff and one person did say something to me just one person which the internet has been weirdly kind to me throughout this there's like one probably like a 12 year old and they said something like if your grief is so hard then why are you making why do you have time to make videos and i'm like miss girl i make these videos to get me through my grief i share my grief and if i'm not making my videos i'm literally sitting pacing back and forth like screaming trying to understand or like looking up the afterlife like just because you see like 60 seconds of my day doesn't mean i'm showing you you see what i want you to see it doesn't mean i'm showing you where i'm like having these breakdowns which i'll insert a clip
this was I just had filmed like a what I eat in a day and then I left the camera rolling and like this was literally obviously I chop my videos up and I'll only show you like the good parts but in between everything I literally break down like I wake up and I walk to the fridge and I just like Ugh, like I'm so angry <laughs> some days some days I'm not um and like literally I'll sit down and eat and I'll just be eating and it's like such a normal thing for me. This is so weird. It's not when I'm around people, but I'm alone all the time. So maybe that's why. But my eyes water up because I'm just sitting like if I'm just doing anything, I'm th I'll think about it for a second. And then I like stop crying. But it's all, it's always in my head. As soon as I get in the car, right when I start the car, I have to breathe, not cry. When I'm driving, I just like picture her in the car with me. And I feel like she is like because I don't know if like her spirit's like in there with me. I don't know. I literally am in the shower and like I open my eyes quick because I feel like she's like standing in there. I don't know y'all like <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm not crazy I'm self-aware like I said I'm not afraid of her I just it's so freaking weird the person who you're closest to in the entire world is just like gone like what now you know like I'm just so sad for her and I'm so sad for how young she was and like the whole future she won't get to have I'm gonna live more of my life on this earth without her than I've lived with her which I cannot fathom I'm only 24 years old now I'm the same age she was um I just turned 24 and like I can't understand that because uh, she's all I know like literally since I came out the womb we were like this like she wore blue I wore pink we were like the Kindle and Kylie Kindle and Kylie can never so it's just weird it's weird but I'm still like it's so fresh that I feel like I'm still kind of just like oh I just haven't seen her in a couple months you know so it's always gonna hit me and it always does hit me when I least expect it I just wanted to read these things and kind of tell her story in a way I don't really know what I accomplished um, I'm all over the place moral of this is I really miss my sister and um, I'm not gonna be okay for a long time but I'm always constantly trying my best to be okay and I think everyone should do that and you really shouldn't take people to gr for granted um, because literally anything could happen to anyone and I I've heard that a million times like I've been on your side listening to it and I'm like yeah like and I, I realized it like yeah anything can happen but you still don't think it's actually gonna happen to you like it's so weird that's why sometimes I just can't be sad about it because I literally will just I'll wake up and I'll be like my sister's dead what like what the heck I, I don't laugh I'm just like no like that's just so weird like I I just refuse to believe it sometimes um I know it is true but I can't get sad about it because it's so not normal. It's so like th that function doesn't, okay. Now I just sound like I'm losing it. But um, if you're hurting and you've lost a sibling, you're not alone. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers and I don't know why these things happen, but. Hi, really quick. So I'm editing this video that I just filmed. This is more directed for the siblings of addicts. Um, I know what it's like to give them multiple chances and just like be completely done with them Cut them off because you're just so sick of it. You've been stolen from lied to cheated on at the end of the day blood is blood and I had to do that too. I had to be mean to him I had to be mean to my sister so many times and I had to be mean to her towards the end too um, Just because I was so fed up of I was like I have to live my life, you know, like I have to live my life this goes all the way back into you know me having friends over growing up and always having to tell them to lock their cars or lock my door and it seemed silly because like my sister is so normal you literally they just didn't they didn't really understand that just because she's normal doesn't mean she doesn't have a disease like my jewelry all all my ipads and jewelry always going missing mom always having to go to the pawn shop and finding all her jewelry in there and her laptop constantly being pawned just like growing up with that it's you understand it in a way that like people really just don't know about this and it sucks. But now it, it really does hurt me people sending me messages being like, I'm so sorry about your loss. Like I have, my sister's an addict too and I haven't spoken to her in a couple months. I'm just like, oh my God, I would do anything to be able to speak to my sister. I did all that I could do. I know I did all that I could do and it's nobody's fault, but if you can relate to this at all like I just want you to like send this to your sister or brother or mom or dad or friend um, and let them know how much they matter and that I want them to like try and realize how much you're really helping them and really trying and like you being mean to them is only because you're kind of tired of dealing with being 
effed over, you know? But at the end of the day, you're always gonna be there for them no matter what, no matter how much money they take from you or how much they lie to you or how much they manipulate you. I have always had a weakness for her because I always wanted better for her and family should always believe in you even when no one else will. And I feel like my sister didn't always remember that because even when I would remind her, she'd be like, you're right. And I'm like, why do you forget that? We're always here for you. We are always going to be. We get mad at you because you're not on the right path, but we love you endlessly, you know? Basically, you're not alone. I've been there, and I just would give anything. I never thought it would happen to me. I never, never, never thought it would. Not for another 10 or so years, maybe. You know, call your friend. Call your loved one. Check in on them. Even if they're telling you that they're sober, not using you know you never know so just check in on them I'm telling you and you do not want this it's even worse than dealing with it my little thumbprint okay side note another editing side note there's little things like i know i spoke on how like things you don't think about that like literally it's i can't escape it it's all i think about um i turn on my netflix and i see my sister's name on <laughs> the account and i can't get rid of it like what am i supposed to do get rid of it no. I keep getting emails, you know, all these. Every time I'm at my parents' house, there's letters in the mail coming to her. I can't go to the nail salon I always go to because I don't want to have to talk about it. So I went to a different nail salon, a random one I've never been to, and I'm laying down getting my eyebrows waxed, and the lady just starts complimenting my eyelash extensions and is like, oh, who does them? Where do you go? Blah, blah, blah. I told her. And then she's like, do you have a sister? Like, how ironic is that? The first time I go to a nail place after losing my sister and I avoided the one I always go to because they knew her because they've done our nails since we were literally toddlers and so I went to a different one. She asked me that and so I just kind of was caught off guard like, uh, um, yeah, you know, I didn't know what to say. I said, yeah. Uh, she said, oh, okay. Yeah, you should t get your sis teach your sister to do your lashes. Then she'll do your lashes for you all the time at home. And I'm just like, oh, okay, like laughing sitting there literally trying not to ball my eyes out when really I just want to look at this woman and be like, I just buried her last week, you know? You know, like even when I'm just walking around shopping, if somebody gives me like, even if I'm just like somewhere in public, if somebody's like giving me a little bit of attitude, which I haven't been in public a lot because I literally just have panic attacks. I just want to scream at them and be like, well, I just buried my sister. Like you don't, basically you don't know what anyone's going through ever. You don't know what and this is so cliche and I read it all the time on social media like you never know what the person in front of you is going through or but like you could really just make anybody's day a total stranger and like you should just be nice to everyone because I've had to do like during my sister's my sister passed there was so much stuff we had to do um like go to the florist with my parents and pick out her casket and pick out jewelry for her to wear and People don't ask questions, but I like couldn't form sentences and just didn't feel okay and felt so off and like when people are like, what do you need this for? And then, during that week, I, if I went somewhere and anybody was remotely rude to me, if somebody ran a red light or, and, or if someone swerved my lane and flicked me off or like if anyone were to do something remotely small, I literally think I would have been like, <gasps> like I wouldn't have been able to breathe. Ugh, I just can't. I'm even still like frustrated all the time talking about it because like even when I walk out of the house I just sometimes wish there was like a sign over my head that said like please be nice to me my sister just died but also like I don't want like any the sympathy and like I would never just meet someone and like tell them that I'm just talking so much but basically you never know what anyone's going through so please be kind to everyone I'm working on it myself I'm always kind to strangers but um I don't know everything about everyone you know like I don't know I'm talking a lot but I hope you're all kind and a big thing about this and coming on here and sharing is that I share my grief with everyone. And I really want to talk about the loss of my sister, but something very big that everybody has been connecting? Connecting with me on is my grief and sharing my grief. I feel like this is just so important because I have not been in the right mind the past couple of months. I have just snapped on people and gone off and just been so full of like hurt and I'm not apologizing for my grief. I don't think anyone should apologize for their grief. I know that doesn't give me an excuse to act a certain way, but I don't feel crazy because I've been listening to this audiobook called It's Okay That You're Not Okay by Megan De Devine and I've jotted down a couple things from her audiobook and I really want to share them because I f she basically just talks about in chapter two, I think, how um, we as a culture 
are not taught on, we were not taught properly on how to treat grief. I myself am, I'm guilty of doing some of these things. You know, of course people want to help you because that's human. Everyone wants to help you when you're hurting. Uh, people want to help you take away the pain. But honestly, during this whole grieving process, many times I felt like unappreciated or shunned or dismissed. I wanted people to really feel and understand what exactly I was going through. Like I wanted people to really understand what I lost. And it wasn't even helping me by like getting that my point across um everyone's gonna have an opinion on how you grieve and how you should better yourself you know during grief you try and find comfort in things that you used to find comfort in before and you just can't grief is not something that you solve or fix it's not an illness you know i've gotten dozens and dozens of messages and a lot of them like i have so many that i just can't even go through them all and i really want to connect with people but like they just start off with this and let me let me explain this okay Many people will try to empathize. So when grieving, we as humans share stories to help you feel less alone, which is almost unintentionally co comparing one grief with another, and it almost always backfires. So almost every message I get is, hey, just wanted to let you know, like, I love what you're doing, sharing your stories so much. I lost my grandpa, who was my best friend, or I lost my pet fish, you know, and I haven't responded to all of these messages because I'm like, oh, maybe in a couple months when I'm in a different headspace. Someone experiencing a loss similar to yours does not mean that they understand you. We all carry stories, um, but these just it, this just doesn't bring you comfort. I um, have been on the other side of things and like said the same stuff. You know, especially if I saw somebody lose someone to addiction, I most definitely will reach out. But um, there's a reason when you're grieving this book, it just like really helps you not feel crazy because and it, there's times when I'm just like, why do I just, why does this, the nicest things I read, why do they make me so mad? It's because there's a time and a place to discuss this stuff. And when someone's world has just completely blown up, it's not really, that's not the time. And it sucks because you know that the other person is just means well and is just trying to comfort you. And I hate that it like angers me because every single loss is valid, but not every single loss is the same. In the book, she states how divorce is not the same as death of a partner. Death of a grandparent is not the same as death of a child. Losing your job is not the same as losing a limb. You know, um, it all hurts, but it doesn't all hurt the same. Like every single relationship is not the same. And if you're grieving and like going through this, I really want you to hear this because if I was sitting on your end and heard this, I would like, it just makes you not feel as crazy because grief is a universal thing. Like we're literally, everyone's gonna, most likely everyone's gonna experience it, but it's every single person's grief for every single person they lose is going to be completely different. The way I've grieved with every pet, every human, every grandparent, every sibling that I've lost, it's all been different. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just simply not the same. And we all deserve to be heard, but we can't comfort one another by comparison. None of that is actually medicine. Like none of that is actually helping, you know? Like I don't really know what to say to that when people say it gets better I'm also in fairly beginning of grief so this is probably coming off negative but I'm just telling you what is in this book um, that this girl wrote who lost her husband and it just it's all about grief and it just explains why you feel angry when people are being so nice to you and like <laughs> why you maybe like lose faith in things and basically why when people are trying to comfort you and sharing stories of their own why it feels so crappy and it doesn't actually comfort you at all it's because they're unintentionally taking the focus off your hurt but they mean well and it's not what they mean to do it just is almost like dismissing your hurt in a way i don't know i think everyone should read this book and i just wanted to share that with all my little grieving homies out there and also to explain why I probably have not responded to any messages. I appreciate all the love and I just, it's like when my world blew up, I just, it's just not something I like really wanted to look at, you know? But I do feel, I do feel for the people, I feel for everyone out there. I mean, it's, this is a terrible thing and I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. But just wanted to share that. <laughs>